The next presentation from Dr. Gorban, who will represent Donetsk Physical Technical Institute named after Galkin. Dear participants of our meeting, allow me to present to you the presentation based on the work uh, conducted by Donetsk Physical uh, Technical Institute, uh, zirconia nanopowders, based on the zirconia dioxide and the technology of their production. The world market of nanopowders shows that oxide powders are found in um, apply, uh, in application of various uh, spheres of industry, and these uh, spheres are not only in their functions. If the same chemical material is necessary for use in various fields of industry, we all understand that it will be used for different tasks. Therefore, we have to um, customize it for every particular application. And it was already it was already mentioned today by Dr. Lazinski, who said that there's a huge gap between the producers and the customers who use the nanopowders in their uh, products and this problem can be resolved in two ways. First way that was suggested is to create an intermediary company that would help to connect the consumers and the producers. So an intermediary that finalizes the property. And the second principle, second way, is to create uh, such technology which is going to be smart, self-educating. Uh, a smart technology that will be based on the single technological complex, but will adapt to certain needs. So in this case, the producers of uh, powders should work in close cooperation with those who use their products directly. Still, um, Whichever way we choose, whether we develop technologies or we try to connect the producers and the customers, nevertheless, with each year, the need grows um, in nano-sized grains and the cost in their development uh, increased in technology of their obtaining and uh, finalizing of the end product. Uh, if we see, if you look at the world market of zirconia nanopowders, we can see that it is uh, mostly developed in those countries which have their own raw materials and commodity base. So two thirds The one-third of production is uh, in China, and uh, this is a large-scale production. Other countries have a small-scale production. And we think that this kind of production can be more mobile in these market conditions because it will allow to implement technologies which is uh, more affordable and accessible to the consumers, to the customers, and will be easy to use uh, in uh, finding solutions to various technological tasks. Ukraine has a third greatest deposit of zirconia in the world. although it's on the fifth place on the way these deposits are developed. 
As a product, uh, zirconia nanopowder has been long used in the notion of price, of the size. The price was largely dependent on the size of uh, the grains. And largely this connection is lost because the properties of nanopowders are determined by, as an oxide material, are determined not only by size and um, surface, but the sum total of this property. And only the, the product, when you understand what properties the customers need at the end, only then you will be able to offer a competitive product and uh, provide all the necessary qualities and properties. It should be noted that, of course, there's a huge gap. Uh, there, are there are companies who produce large grain sized powders. There are companies that produce a mono product, uh, nano powders of smaller grain size, and uh, several companies that produce a mid, mid size uh, grain powders. The technology of the Donetsk Technical Institute uh, offers a wide range of uh, various powders, and if we if we focus on building our own bases, the price of these powders can be significantly lower, at least within uh, Ukraine, on the Ukrainian market, because most often the Japanese producers, let's say, they sell $152 per kilogram, uh, 40 nanometers grain, and $200 per kilo if we import this uh, powder into, in Ukraine. What are the advantages of this technology compared to other industrial technologies, firstly? It should be based, of course, on a rather simple hardware solution. And the, this is a chemical precipitation that we use. The methods that we use is physical and chemical modification uh, in the process of synthesis of nanopowders. And it allowed us to completely eliminate the grinding stage and we have a dispersed product, and this product can have uh, certain characteristics imbued in it from the start. As I said, this is a specific uh, size of uh, uh, grain size of nano powders, and uh, dispersion, the, uh, act a specific surface area, and soft agglomerates. And also using such uh, treatment methods on the structure of uh, material the shape and the structure of crystals can be adjusted. So we can obtain not only asymmetric powders, but also mm, anisotropic powders. The technology is based on the line that is used at uh, Donetsk Physical Te uh, Technical Institute with the support of National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. But I will say that the work uh, development of this technology and uh, making it a smart technology, it would have been po wouldn't have been possible without the cooperation with other academic institutes and the universities. So you've seen this matrix already. This is an example that uh, was done together with our colleagues with the, uh, the Institute of Physical Chemistry, which shows that um, catalytic properties of powders for uh, CO oxidation will depend on the size of the grains. So not only the grain size should be accounted for, but other properties as well. This explains the catalytic properties of uh, organic substrates, and it shows that the work has been done with um, potential customers, and it was shown that you can provide such a catalyst that will have much higher properties compared with a known oxidizing process. Another application of nanopowders that we had um, obtained together with uh, group electronic technologies at the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. Uh, we created thermal barriers uh, coating for um, turbine engine, a jet engine. 
Also, very good properties compared to crystalline, crystalline powders. Um, composite materials with improved properties, for instance, polymer properties. Um, using nanopowders based on zirconia is very promising for dispersed strength and dispersion strengthens steels and other types of coatings as i said the targeted the the, the change of the anion sub uh, grid alterations can create anisotropic or uh, other types of filters for air purification. Another pot potential sphere is uh, medical industry, in particular creating the mineral coatings such as the shell, the core shell, will create a fluorescent markers to diagnose uh, blood cancer. Another interesting result, and we already had a document on a potential, uh, we have a test reports already, is creating different pastes. The, uh, that would uh, enable to identify the defects in the bones. Not only to, uh, that will enable not to not only to cure but to identify all the bone defects and uh, to monitor the the course of the healing. So our motto for today is: we don't offer you the mono product nano powder. You you need to know what you really want. You come to us and we will custom make the product for you. Yeah, unfortunately, well, like several years ago, we went around and asked for attention. Now we understand that you, we don't. There's no reason to offer something too abstract. People have to come to us. They will tell us what they need, and we will offer them a tailored solution for their tasks. So this here shows our uh, approbated. Um, developments and some of the prospects. I would like to say again thanks to our academic partners who helped us show how nanopowders can be applied and that they need to be uh, produced the way um, they are needed for end products. So this is our contact information. What is the use of nanopowders, which is the most promising, in your opinion? Have you looked into the optical properties of your powders, uh, zirconia oxide, for the use as uh, luminophoros powders? 
Yeah, this was our joint work with the Institute of Semiconductors. And we showed that uh, um, zirconia oxide is a luminophore or substance of a white that emits white light. Okay, thank you.